Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the MakeCode Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard. I'm Richard on the MakeCode Forum. And I'm Thomas at Sparks on the MakeCode Forum. And today we are continuing to work on our Pikmin game. But first, I wanted to talk about how there is a mini game jam going on right now. So um, this one, the theme was made by Lucas. <coughs> and the theme is hacking. Um, so we do a mini game jam first Monday of every month, but I was sick this time, so Lucas took over for me. Thank you, Lucas. Um, and uh, I made a game for it this time. I always say I'm going to make a game for it, and I never do, but I did make a game for it this time because I had to. I, I had to test out some stuff for an arcade feature I was doing, and I needed to make a really long game to do it. So that's why I started doing this. Um, but anyway, I made a little game, um, and I'm going to show that off first. So you're recording. All right, so here we go. Let's uh, actually let's start it off. Okay, so Agent 823, we've got a job for you. The client is Shigoto Industries. Seems like they've been having trouble with rival company Sakana Limited. You'll be pulling some trade secrets from an encrypted Sakana data stream. Intel intercepted a set of keys. Your job is to find each key in memory. That'll lead us to the data we need. All right, A23, let's get to work. Here's the first packet. All right, so the way this game works is you see you have all these letters that show up. You have keys on the right. Um, inside here somewhere, there is um, all the letters for one of these keys that you need to find. Um, if you press A, you can then move and trace out a word. And then if you release A and you've selected one of the the keys, then you will move on to the next one. So that's the idea. Nice. So if we look through here, hmm. Okay, I see night. There you go. Do that. So now it gets crossed off. Good work, AT3. I'll use this to read the data. Looks like some sort of client list. I'm sure Shigoda will appreciate it. Let's keep going. Here's the next pack. And it just keeps going on like this. And there's little cutscenes and stuff. Um, so I'll, I'll post this to the forum later. But uh, yeah, I just thought it was fun. Um, and I don't know if it's the most fun game, but. I think it's fun. I used to love word searches when I was you know, growing up. I yeah. haven't done one in ages, but then it's still like, it feels very, very the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely similar. Um, all right. Well, anyway, with that, let's switch over to our Pikmin game. Wait, actually, first, I want to find whatever this one is. <laughs> do, do, do. Yeah, I see AWN near your pond. Oh, yeah. Got it. All right. Um, hmm, not what we're looking for. Let's move on to the next key, A23. Here's the packet. This was inspired, by the way, by Armored Core, a game about mechs fighting each other, which has very little to do with hacking. But um, you have this handler named Handler Walter, who is constantly like, so the, the interesting thing about Armored Core is it is it exists in a world with humans, but you're playing inside mechs and you never see a human in the entirety of the game, even though all the characters are human. Um, it's just everyone's always talking over like radio, you know? And so you have this handler, handler Walter, who is like constantly giving you um, tasks and things. Um, sounds sounds ripe for a plot twist. Um, uh, I'm not going to give anything away, <laughs> but um, uh, it does have a somewhat interesting plot. I would say that's the super reason to play the game, but it's serviceable. Yeah. yeah. Also, you're just sitting on Queen right now. Oh, you're right, I am. Anyway, I'll, like I said, I'll post this to the forum later. You can give it a shot if you want. Uh, let's switch over to our Pikmin game. All right, this this project is much bigger, so it might take a second to open. Okay, 
So where we left off on Monday is we were working on these enemies. So we can see this enemy right here, who you can see I am controlling right now, but that's not how it's going to be. You know, we're, we're originally going to give these guys AI. Um, they have an attack they can do, which is this little flamethrower. You can breathe fire. <laughs> and um, I, so what we need to do is, one, we need to give these guys AI. I think that's the first thing we're going to do so that we're no longer controlling them. We're going to have them walk around and then occasionally attack. Um, and uh, then we are also going to do combat, so being able to fight these guys with your bugs. Um, and then we also have to make it so these guys can kill the bugs. So one of the things about Pikmin is it is a game about death, which is um, interesting. You have these adorable little Pikmin who are helping you out, and they will die. It's going to happen. And when they die, a little ghost comes out of them and flies up into the into the heavens. And you feel really bad, but... Yeah, I don't think my heart could take it. At the same time, you know, if you think about it rationally, these Pikmin, there was like one of them when you started, you know? You really helped their population boom quite a bit. So Pikmin are just paying you back. But still. Um, anyway. <laughs> Be kind to your Pikmin. Um, though the AI for Pikmin was bad in um, old games, so I would occasionally get into a state where like one Pikmin would just not be behaving, like it wouldn't be able to stick with a pack and kept getting um, <laughs> like left behind or something like that. And I do remember one time in a fit of rage as a child, grabbing that Pikmin and throwing it off the edge into, oh into a chasm. And then oh I, I felt so terrible <laughs> afterwards. So I was like, learned. how did I do this? No. Um, so be kind to your Pikmin. <laughs> okay. So I actually anyway. gotta get reelected next term, so what? You gotta get reelected next term, so sure. Okay, so. Black president. Um all right, so let's collapse blocks for my code. Um, we're gonna go to our where we're creating these guys. Um, which is inside of our on tile map loaded. And the first thing we're going to do is turn off the controls. So inside of my bug president extension, I do believe there is a set controls enabled. So there we go. So let's set that to false. And if I remember correctly how I implemented this code, they should just automatically walk if I give them a velocity. Nice. So let's see. Nope. <laughs> Acing present facing direction rather than All right, yeah, we're gonna have to fix this. All right. <laughs> um Right, 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 right. Yeah, I remember why that's not working. That's fine. That's fine. We'll fix it. Bug president starting as a conflict. Mm -hmm. All right, whatever. That's fine. All right, so we're going to go find our bug president extension, which I made somewhere, and I think is just called bug president. Bug president wins. That's not it. Okay, I think I've gone too far back now. Yeah, a month back, it seems a little too far. Yeah. Bug president circle? No, Isn't that's it? not it. Untitled, maybe? No. It was one day ago. Bug emperor? No, that's not it. Oh, here it is, bug president. I need to find it. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> sorry, I read the namespace Mr. President. I forgot about that. Um, All right. So um, we can look at this code real quick. So we have this bug president class, which is not a sprite, but it does have a sprite. And um, it, uh, let's see. 
We have the some code to position the legs, reset legs, draw. There's an update somewhere. Update, here we go. Yeah, all right, so here we go, update. So um, inside here is where we do the turning. And then we have if controller up is pressed and controls are enabled, then we are setting the velocity to be in the direction where we're going. Otherwise, we set the velocity to be zero. Um, and then this is some extra stuff that has to do with walking. So um, what we're going to do instead is <coughs> put in a um, Boolean here, which is going to be moving with velocity equals false, like that. And um, we're going to have moving velocity, which is going to be a number. And inside here, oh, we already have speed. So I don't need this. I do need the other one, though. Um, OK, so if. Um, that if statement right here. So we have this if controller up is pressed and control is enabled. So we're just going to do the same thing, but or this dot moving with velocity, then we will just do the code to move forward. Um, and then inside of here, we are going to make a function now. So let me grab this. Set moving. There we go, like that. And um, we're just going to do set moving with velocity to enabled. <laughs> and uh, there we go, that should do it. So just going to share this, copy this link. Now we go back to our code. For safety, I'm going to save a copy of this project. Boy, it is quiet today. Joey's not here, and I feel like there's barely anyone watching also. If you are watching, know. say hi in the chat. A day a holiday somewhere? I don't know. In Joey's Something. native Canada? <laughs> um, they, just, they just knew Joey wasn't going to be here. Yeah, it could be. Um, OK, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and save this. But we have a copy, just in case something goes wrong. Not expecting it to go wrong, but just in case. There we go. Going to go ahead now and switch to JavaScript. Going down to Explorer, and I already have this bug president right here. So this is that project that I added. We're going to delete that. Now I'm going to have a bunch of errors in my project. Now we're going to add an extension. Paste in that share link. Add it. All those problems are going to go away. Now we're going to make some new problems. Um, go back to blocks. Discard and go to blocks. And one day I will take the time to understand what on earth this <laughs> this process is. <laughs> I understand why I do it that way. I've seen you do it a few times where you like make an error, go to blocks, discard your error code, and, and then magically stuff happens. But I, it's um, over my head at the moment. Yeah. So uh, the reason I do that is because. Um, if I just do go back to blocks, it'll work, but my code will be changed because our decompiler does the best it can to take JavaScript and translate it into blocks, right? However, if you have an error in your program and you try to go to blocks, we can't decompile it. 
So we say, we give you the option, either you can stay in JavaScript or you can toss this out and just go to whatever the last version of your blocks project was. I see. Uh, so the reasoning is you didn't actually make any code changes. Yeah. Well, I mean, you did in that you replaced the mode prison file, but you don't want your blocks to get messed with. So. Yes. Gotcha. Um, and you should be careful when you're doing this because especially if you change extensions, the blocks you're using could have changed. So you could end up breaking your project by doing it this way. Um, this is, I just happen to know that all I'm doing is, you know, adding a new thing to this extension. So I'm able to do this. And, <clears throat> and again, this is really just me being lazy because um, I like that it makes it so all my blocks are still in the same place um, when I go back. There you go. All right, anyway, inside here now we have a set moving forward. So we're going to go ahead and grab this. Ooh, bring it all the way down. Make this temp enemy. Set it to true. Look at that guy. <laughs> Look at him go. He looks like a squid. Yeah, OK. Uh, so we have a bug there. It's kind of cute. OK, oh, now it's walking. Time. Oh, no, oh. now it's now it's messed up. Wait, did it start walking when you were walking? Oh, yep, that is what happened. Okay, all right. Well, anyway. Sorry, I should have thought of this before stream, but I didn't think it would be a problem. So we'll go ahead and fix this. Um, all right. So obviously, we're our legs are only moving if we have the controller up pressed. Um, so, let's see. So here's where we're doing controller up is pressed, and then we are doing this and say legs reset equals false, and uh, here we go. So if not controller left is pressed or controller up is pressed or controller right is pressed, then we are doing the leg thing. Um, so for this, I think we just want to do this, this dot moving a philosophy. Hi, Ben. Hey, ben. hey folks. Got Hi, vertical loose. Vertical loose in the chat. Ben's here now. Yeah. Things are looking up. But We're speculating if it's some holiday somewhere, but for some reason there's <laughs> no one here today. <laughs> okay, uh, I think that should do it. But just for peace of mind, we're going to do controller dot up. And see, yeah, these are the only two places that's mentioned. So I think that had to be what it, what it was. All right. Seems good. All right. Share project. Go back. Is that called Bug President? Did you? It's been a while. Share like. Like. What? I did. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess it's Bug President. You know, you, you you haven't been watching stream, have you, Ben? I have not. Ah. Uh, so we're making oh, a Pikmin, we're making a Pikmin game called Bug President. Um, oh my god, this is cool. Here's, here's Bug President. You walk around, and uh, you know you got these little bugs you pick up. And ah, uh, those legs look awesome in movement. Thank you. And uh, you can have them do tasks for you. This is great. Yeah, I don't have enough. This is kind of the best part about uh, not being on stream in a bit and then coming back and being like, what? So what are you working on this time? And it never fails to surprise. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, so you get the idea. We're doing enemies right now. <laughs> and um, I just had to make a change to, I have an extension for doing this bug president. So if you want to add bug president, um, you can too. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to delete this, remove it, Bunch of errors in my code, wave extensions, add it back. 
This is just so I can update it. I should really file a fig for this, but if you have a if you have a persistent share leak, you should be able to update it instead of having to do this silly thing. I managed to type all of that and not make an error. Oh no, I cool, I did make an error. I go to blocks. This is a trick, Ben, that I just explained. But um, so if you if you go to JavaScript and go back to blocks, your project is going to go through our decompiler, and that means that things are going to move around and stuff. So if you don't want that to happen, you can trick it by making an error in your program and then click discard and go to blocks. And that will throw out your thing, but it's dangerous. You shouldn't do that unless you know for a fact that your blocks program isn't going to be broken. All right. So I, I happen to know that my blocks program is not going to be broken in this case. So I can do it, but yeah, be careful. All right. There you go. All right, cool. Look at that guy. Look at him walking with his legs. There you go. Oh, what is, what is that? There's a split Sorry. second there where the legs sort of like come into being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably should have fixed that when we were editing the extension. But um, in the beginning, there is still a, a, a problem in the beginning with the legs moving yeah. over to where the president is. They're like connected to that enemy there, and then they come back. Yeah, well, they just start on the center of the screen, and that's also where that guy is starting. All right. Cool, okay, okay, okay. So we have our bug. Um, we have him walking around. And um, let's go over to where he is. There you go. He can still do his little fire attack. Um, so let's give this guy actually some behavior. <clears throat> so what I think we want to do is um, we want him to just be kind of wandering around in a very small area. Um, we want him to stick to his territory, all right? Don't want him going too far until he catches sight of some bugs, and then we're going to want him to follow those bugs, you know? So this is going to be a little bit more complicated than the uh, AIs that we typically do for games on this tree, but I don't think it'd be too bad. Um, all right, so to start off, what we're going to do is um, edit our code a little bit. So we just created this guy as a test right here. We're going to go ahead and go to our tile map and um, actually put in a tile to put this guy because we're going to need, um, like I said, we need some way to like give him territory that he stays in. Um, and so we're going to give him a tile that's going to be his home base and he's just going to kind of wander around that home base. Go. All right. And I can also get rid of some of these random bugs we have right now to give us some room. So we'll make a new tile. Um, here, I'm going to make it. A frowny face. And we will switch it to be the colors of our guy. All right, so go ahead and put this guy right here. <laughs> and um, we're now going to go over to our where we're creating everything in our on tile map loaded. And we're going to create our enemy there. So um, do a loop, or you know what? Let me just grab one of these other loops. I'm doing essentially the same thing. I was looking up the release dates for the Pikmin games, and I didn't realize there was a 10-year gap from Pikmin 3 to Pikmin 4. That is yeah. uh, impressive that that franchise is still alive. Yeah, especially since it doesn't sell very well, um, which is why I have to say, everybody, please buy Pikmin games. I'm going to be so sad if they stop making Pikmin games. All right, this is this is not an official position of Microsoft, obviously. But, you know, and actually, I'm not telling you to go out and buy things, I mean, to be clear. But I really hope people <laughs> continue to buy Pikmin games because I love them. All right. I finally got my Switch set up in my new place. Maybe I <coughs> could go buy Pikmin now. Yeah. All of the Pikmin games are now on Switch. It's, it's a wonderful time to be a Pikmin fan. Um, all right. So anyway, created this guy. 
Um, we need to place it on the right tile. And also, let's get rid of that moving thing, because we don't want it to actually move right now. Um, and we are going to uh, set this to inside of scene, place on top of, go, place temp enemy, on top of that location. And we're going to see his legs now shoot over to him. There they go. Whoop. Oh, Play those legs overshot a little bit. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to have to wait like two seconds. <laughs> Let's fix this bug. Let's fix this bug. We have to. All right. Head back over to Bug President, our extension. And um, inside here, there are a few things we need to do. OK, so the reason that happened was, so we saw the thing where our legs always start in the center of the screen, and then they run over to wherever we are, right? Um, so that is a problem, because if you happen to be far away, they have to move very fast to get there in the amount of time that they are supposed to do to take a step. and because of how our game engine works, um, there's a chance that they will overshoot and um, pass right on through. So what was happening this time was, yep, they did overshoot, and they got stuck on the outside of the tile map, <coughs> which is, you know, not great. So um, what we're going to do instead is, well, one, we're going to take all of our legs and turn them into ghosts so that if they're not already. So I think I make them inside the constructor. Oh, no, OK, I am setting them all to be ghosts, so that's good. So actually, I'm not entirely sure why they got stuck then, but you know what, this is fine, this is fine. Um, then we are going to, let's see, what's the best way to do this? So. Um, we basically want to say if if the distance is greater than a certain amount, we're just going to teleport the legs into position as opposed to taking a step. Because the way this works right now is every time the bug moves a certain distance from the previous location, um, a step automatically happens. So that's how we keep stepping. Um, so we, we basically want to have another distance threshold. And this is going to be like if we do this, which is just like way too far than it could be for a single step, then we will just teleport them to the position instead. Makes sense. All right. Um, so we have this position legs function. And inside here, we are doing a bunch of math to put them in the right location. I will not bore you with all of this, but I had to calculate all the numbers over there. there. Yeah, um, but we're calling this sprite utils move to. All right, and this is what's doing the actual moving. Um, so we want to be able to also teleport um, sometimes instead of just moving to here. So we're going to put in another parameter here, which is going to be teleport be boolean. And um, rather than copy all of this code and, uh, well, yeah, all right, we'll just make a function for this, actually. This, this will be easy. Um, so we'll make a function. Move leg. It's going to take in <coughs> a, um, a sprite. Well, first we'll do um, a teleport. It's going to be a boolean. It's going to take in a sprite. It's going to take in um, an x, a y, and a time. Like that. And what it's we're going to do? The time you. For the movement to occur. What would happen if, if you just set time to zero? Would that effectively teleport it? I don't know what would happen actually. Fair. Um okay. Sprite utils dot move to that is what I was using, right? Yes. Yeah. Ah, okay. So this this doesn't take in an X and Y, it actually takes in a position object. Um, so that's fine. Do that instead. Now 
Now, what the heck did I name this? You sure it wasn't pomegranate? I don't think it was. Oh, cool. That is what I named it. Cool. Um, OK, so if um, teleport, actually, we don't want to do this. If teleport, then we just want to do sprite.x equals position.x and sprite.y equals position.y and hello. Um, and now uh, what we want to do otherwise is just call that same thing we were calling before, which is sprite utils dot move to, which is going to take in our sprite, our position, and um, our time, like that. Um, and now the reason I did it this way was so that I can go up here and do some fancy cursor tricks. Yeah. Oh, we support that? Nice. Well, we just have Monaco, so Monaco supports it. Which Even better. Move leg, and then the uh, to pass in our teleport, and there we go. All right, now we just need to go to everywhere we call it position legs. And in false. So false was our behavior before, so we want to keep that behavior everywhere. We're just going to do it um, differently in the one place where the code we're about to have. All right, all fixed, no more errors. Hey, Lucas. Um, Lucas, I made a mini game jam game. I'll show it off again at the end of stream. All right. <clears throat> so um, with that, we now just need to detect when we want to do that teleport. Um, so we have right here, if sprite utils distance between last step x, last step y, this dot sprite is greater than this dot step distance, then we do a step. Um, what we're going to do here instead is uh, grab this distance, pull it out. Like that. There. And uh, we're going to put this inside of an else if. And we're going to say if um, distance is greater than this dot step distance times three, then we're going to do the same thing, but uh, we will be passing in. Or you know what? We can just do it this way. I don't, I don't want to duplicate all this code. So for the teleport parameter, we will just do distance is greater than this dot step distance times three. OK, that should do it. Share, share, share. Here, do the same thing once again. So One day modifying code in <coughs> like a specific imported uh, sure. extension mm -hmm. within your project. Uh, so um, you can import share links just like you can extensions. So I have another project that has this bug president code and I was editing it there and then I share that and add it to this project as a share link. I did not copy the share link. Oh, that's a problem. No, it'll be fine. I'll just open in another tab and get it. Hey. Here we go. Share, share, copy this time. Paste, get out of your other tab. Put that there. Errors go away. Make my new error. There we go. Go to box. This card can go to box. <laughs> 
Lucas says three brave cats DLC is being worked on and shared it in chat. Oh, oh I love this title screen. All right. Why is this still happening? It's just a couple of his legs this time. Yeah. Okay, so this did not fix that problem. Uh, all right, here. Let's let's see. So his legs are still messed up. Let's go ahead and just give him some velocity and see if it fixes it. And if it does, then we're just going to ignore it for now. And I'll I'll figure it out later. I don't want to spend all stream just figuring out this one bug. I'll set this to true, set this to temp enemy. Nope, that made it worse. Oh, wait. get up there. <laughs> <laughs> it is a pretty funny bug in the very least. <laughs> All right, we're just going to ignore this for now. Um, so I'm going to toss this moving forward, and we will go ahead and um, do this, ignoring that issue. Um, All right, so I'm going to make a function which is going to be add AI, add enemy AI. And it's going to take in a sprite, which is going to be our enemy, like that. And we're going to go ahead and call this on our bug. And I'm doing it like this just because I don't want to crowd out this function, this already very crowded function with you know, all of this stuff. Just a nice little way to break it down a little bit. All right, class that. All right, so to do this enemy um, AI, well, we need to run code that um, basically is going to, on on every game update, kind of just like figure out for our enemy what to do. Um, and to do that, I added a thing to Sprite Utils a while back, which is on my Sprite update every however many milliseconds. So you can pass this in here, pass in our enemy, and this is basically an on-game update, but it's going to run for this sprite. And um, you can have it run for every frame if you put it in zero, but otherwise it'll run for whatever this thing is. Um, so uh, what do we want to do first? Let's do our wandering behavior. So um, to wander, uh, what we're going to do is we need to angle towards a random direction, right? So right now we have a... Um, direction that we are facing, and we want to angle towards a random direction. So we're going to have to turn, then we're going to walk forward for a bit, then we're going to stop, then we're going to turn, then we're going to walk forward for a bit, then we're going to stop. And for now, we're just going to keep doing that. Um, eventually, we're going to make it so that if we go beyond a certain point, we're going to turn back towards our home base so that we can walk back towards that home base. But first, let's just do that turning and walking. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, we're also going to be using sprite data for this because I don't want to create a million variables. Um, so uh, we're going to um, set on this guy a state. So I need a number and I also need a string that we're going to use for the state. So not sprite tells regular sprites. Grab string. We go set this state to string turning and um, we're going to set a number which is going to be target heading and we're going to set this to be um, whatever our current heading is and then a 50 percent chance we will add something to the left otherwise to the right you know, we'll just turn by a set amount um, so we can get our heading from the bug president extension. We have this facing direction right here. And we're going to go into if and grab math, do a 50% chance. Like that. 
and 50% uh, chance we are going to set it to be our my sprite facing direction plus this is in radians by the way and I'm just going to keep this in radians so we're going to go into sprite utils and grab the degrees into radians because I am unable to think in terms of radians naturally and we're going to add 45 degrees I don't know and of course we want to make sure we're using our enemy variable here <laughs> and not my sprite do we All want right. to use enemy or do we want to use sprite? Uh, they're both the same, uh, but I'll use sprite just because it'll make it easier to drag this around later if I put it in another function or something. Um, All right, there we go. Now we do here and make this minus, and there we go. So we're setting our target heading right now. Right now we're doing this every 500 milliseconds. We're going to make this run every uh, every frame, so we're going to change this to zero, and I'll make it so this on-game update runs every frame. Um, all right, but we don't want to set our state to turning and then like do this target heading thing every time. Um, so we are going to um, now, uh, if our state is turning, so basically what this is going to look like is we're going to have a big if statement. So if the state of our sprite is turning, then... We are going to <coughs> uh, turn so that our heading, we're like heading towards that location. So we're going to say um, if a sprite facing direction is less than our target heading, then set property facing to, and now this is going to be our turn rate. Um, so we're going to do facing direction plus, and I don't know, 0 0.1. That's probably going to be way too much. Um, you know what, let's, again, I can't think in terms of radians. I actually have no idea how much point 0.1 is. So we're going to turn one degree. Well, half of... Half don't, of don't do not do right? So one degree is like <laughs> a little less than a third of a revolution. I don't know, a little less than a third of half. Uh, funnier it's going to be. A sixth. I don't know, we'll just see. Yeah, let's just look. All right. Otherwise, we're going to subtract. And we have to do another check in here now. So we want to say <clears throat> if um, we are now greater than our target heading, then we are going to set it to be exactly our target heading. And we are going to set our state to be whatever we want the next state to be. And so we're doing it this way because we want to make sure we don't go past it. So if we just are always adding some amounts going back and forth, there's a chance that because of how floating num point numbers work, we're never going to hit the exact value. We're just going to be constantly like just going bam, 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 bam uh, on either side, each frame. So if we move past it, we want to snap it to the right value and then just move on to the next state. Um, so we're going to set our state to moving forward like that, and we'll handle that later. OK, so we need to do the same thing here, um, except we're going to do it in the opposite direction. Uh, so we're going to do if less than, then we're going to stamp it like that. Oh, OK, all right, that's all good. Um, oh, uh, we should do less than or equal to in the extremely unlikely chance that we hit it exactly. All right, um, and now what we're going to do here is if our state is not turning, then we're just going to turn again. 
because um, it's going to make our code easier to test. Why not? Yeah. Whoa. Ooh. Look at him go. <laughs> it's suddenly wow. a boss monster. All right. But this our code is working properly besides the crazy legs. Um, you can see he's just turning, just turning around. Yep. Um, Do we have a name for this enemy yet? Or should we just call it crazy legs? I think we called them fire bugs. Oh, hey, look, his legs. His legs figured it out. Oh, hey, look they at made that. it back. Um, Sentinel. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Well, um, I said I would show off some games, and I believe that Lucas asked me to play a game also. Um, so let's do that. So first off, I'm going to show off the game I made because I'm selfish. Um, go over here and grab my hacking mini game jam entry. There you go. Um, so the idea with this game is you are an agent for some um, hacking entity, and um, a corporation has hired you to try and steal some trade secrets from another corporation. And you have some keys um, which appear, and um, you need to go through the uh, packets that you get from this encrypted data stream and find the key. And if you do, that'll lead you to the document, and then you know you just keep going on like that. So we have these keys. We have our letters over here, and this is supposed to be like memory. So we need to look through the memory and find one of these keys um, and select it. So. Um, Let's see if we can find one. Let's see. It's almost king right there, but it's not. Hmm. It's always easiest when it's one of the double letter ones, and this is not one of the double letter ones. Yeah, I try to look for rook, and I just can't. Oh, it's a uh, here. I got it. K N I G H T Knight. Oh, I thought it was all supposed to be in one line. <laughs> oh no, it's not. Yeah, so it kind of snakes around like that. This is a very encrypted data stream. Yep, exactly. Uh, they're not messing around. So when There's you do that, if you re release A, then good work. I'll use this to read the data. Looks like some sort of client list. I'm sure Shigoda will appreciate it. Let's keep going. Here's the next packet. And so it keeps going on like this. And you know, your little handler guy talks to you. Ham is asking, is it randomly generated every time? Yes, it is. So um, I randomly generate a grid of letters. And then I randomly place one of the keys inside it by basically just having a node kind of wander around. Yeah, uh, Lucas says a Richard Lore game. Yeah, I, I um, kind of was writing the code for this. And then I didn't have enough time to do things. So it's not very interesting lore, I will say. Um, but, uh, there is, there is a little bit of a story, I guess. Um, and then, uh, yeah, once you find them all, you win the game. So that's the idea. Anyway, hacking James. There you go. Also, cool. sorry, yeah, like no Joey means no stream, but so. Yeah. No, not today. Oh, what were you going to say, Ben? I said it was nice. I like it. Cool. And, oh, gosh, I'm distracted. I'm already trying to find another one. <laughs> really does pull you in. Yeah. Almost pawn here, but not quite. There you go, king. <laughs> no, I could not read that backwards. Yeah, I, I've, I've gotten better at it as I've been writing this game, but... um. It's it's not very difficult once you once you get the hang of it. Um, all right, well, top middle. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah. Continue. <laughs> like I said, the easy the the double letter ones are the easiest ones to get. Yeah. So queen and and rook are are by far the easiest. Um, the ones I have the most trouble with are bishop, which I can never find, <laughs> and um, knight. And then uh, I guess four letter ones are also much easier. But yeah, there you go, another double letter. There you go, rook right there. We're, we're done. We're done. Okay. And <laughs> uh, now we also have a game from Lucas. So if you have not played the Three Brave Cats before, 
Um, this is a game that Lucas made where um, it is a platform you play as three um, cats named Coco, Sam, and Captain Cat. And um, uh, there's been a second one also, obviously. This is DLC for Three Brave Cats 2. And um, I believe it won a game jam, I want to say. Did it win the first game jam? It won a game jam. Um, all right. So I love let's check that out. transition. And I love this world map. Yeah. So um, uh, they always have very good uh, world maps and things. Um, and what's this? I think that is DLC. It's the DLC. Ah, that's the DLC. All right. Yeah, look, look at this map. This is awesome. Look how those boats have little Mario caps. <laughs> All right. Today, while reading the news, RoboCat, who is the villain, saw that the three brave cats had been kidnapped by another Robo thing. RoboCat. I've been replaced. I guess it's up to me to save the world now. Ooh, I get to play as RoboCat? Oh. Wow. Yeah, the controls are pretty awesome, too. Whoa, there's so much kickback on this attack. You gotta use it to jump. Oh, nice. It does make shooting enemies a little bit difficult though. Yeah, it's easiest when you when you just staying above everything. Yeah. Some stuff like to, likes to float to you, and yeah, those enemies are the easiest to get with the the ability. Mm-hmm. I think it hits harder if you hit from above, too. Maybe. That's very cool, Lucas. I am a big fan of... Yeah, Lucas says it does more damage. Yep. I am um, a big fan of games where shooting down makes you go higher. Um, one of my favorite games in that genre is... Um, if you haven't played before, I highly recommend it. Uh, Dan down going. What? <laughs> <laughs> Close. Obviously, I want the indie game down oh, well. Down well was savage. Um, great game. <clears throat> down well, which is the it's a roguelike. You can play it on your phone, which I highly recommend playing it on your phone. You can also get it on Steam, but it's the most fun to play on a phone. And um, you play as a guy with gun boots, and um, <laughs> gun boots shoot down, and they make you kind of like, you know, float up a bit whenever they shoot down. And you can get a bunch of different kinds of gun boots and different, you know, lasers or machine gun or things like that. And it's a really good game. I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Um, anyway, keep it up, Lucas. Um, I think it's good. Uh, I, the, the one thing I would say is I, I would re reduce that kickback when you're moving horizontally. Just because uh, it does make it very difficult to shoot something that is in front of you. Um, Either that, or make maybe, it so you maybe only shoot playing down. the game wrong, huh? I know, I know, I know. But you, you could also make it so it just only shoots down, you know, and then that would kind of take away the thing, because yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, in my game, you can use the cannon to move yourself. Also, you can jump on things. Yeah, right, right. I, I believe you can do that in the old three big guys too, with jump on things to damage. Um, all right. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Um, this has been another mini game, oh, not mini game jam, another arcade advanced stream. Remember, there is a mini game jam happening right now, though, that Lucas came up with the theme for, which is the hacking mini game jam. And um, you can find all the details for that on the forum. It should be pinned on top. I'm going to post my game later. Um, Ham993 says, Can you share your game, Richard? Yep, I will share it. I, I, actually, I'm going to post it to the forum in like 10 minutes. So just like check out the, the forum, it's going to be there. Um, Lucas says, can I do more themes for game jams? I'm not going to make the guarantee of that, but I do like the idea of every once in a while we will have someone on the forum choose the mini game jam theme. I think that's a good idea. Um, so um, I might, Lucas, next time, hand it off to somebody else, like Sarge or Kiwi Phoenix, the people who are you know big contributors to the to the forum so that we can get some, you know, give, give some people some similar chances. All right. Um, and uh, with that, I'm Richard Archard on the Make Code Forum. I am Ben at Donuts on the Make Code Forum. I am Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And um, uh, we will see you on Friday. Bye.